take the lead on this drive. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Canadian Football Central CFL content for the fans, by the fans, and we have our preview here of Week 18 coming right up. We only got a three-game week, uh, three games with some important ramifications for each of them as it is just we're getting closer and closer to the end of the season with very <laughs> few set-in-stone positions. The only one set in stone is with the Alouettes clinching the East Final. Uh, and that they will have that. Uh, but besides that, some teams have clinched playoffs, some teams have not, uh, and even teams that have clinched it, there's no um, no certainty you, on where they you know what I just up, and no one is out of the race yet. Do you know what I just noticed? What did you just notice? Is so BC schedule just gets worse and worse. Yeah. After this week, yeah. they play Calgary. Saskatchewan, Montreal. Yeah. So sick. either they make the playoffs, or their season ends before the season e is even over. Because they have a BC has a bye week, the last week of the season. <laughs> so it's almost like, hey guys, see you next season. We're all having locker clean out week twenty. Yeah, that's crazy. But um. But it makes it better for us. Hilarious. Do you know why? Why? Because the first game of the week we have Calgary or er, Winnipeg versus Hamilton in the game of the week. Yeah, they, yeah, this is gonna be the game of the week. Winnipeg versus Hamilton, two teams on big winning streaks. Oh, did I Hamilton say Calgary? On a on, <laughs> what? Oh, I thought I said Calgary for a second. No, no it's uh, Winnipeg and Hamilton. A uh, four-game heater over there for the Tie Cats as they've tried to storm their way back into the playoff race. And it's the Bulveralls, people. The the Bulveralls. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's it's not Bulveralls. It's not Bulveralls. It's Chicken Brady, baby. It's Chicken <laughs> Brady. <laughs> Chicken Brady what? beats what Bulveralls. Bulveralls, you are out. You, you can know what though? Walk I your ass like, out of here. I would like to see Brady. Walk, you know how the players have like that walk inside the stadium? Yeah. Brady should do it in a chicken outfit. <laughs> well, it's just like 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 old WWF, but like he's the gobbly googer. Like he's in the Listen. he's in the stupid egg at Survivor series. No, like, okay. <laughs> you're like <laughs> You're like the chicken chicken Brady, so I said ah, Brady he just comes does in it, a he chicken does outfit. After, he does that after the touchdowns, that's what it is. See, Bo oh, arrives in Bo Oh, man, the Popeye sponsorships this man is going to have post-career are going to go wild. He's going to make so much money. He already is. The, um, but yeah, and the no, more this, dogs he can save. Yeah, all the, he, hey, he, this man saves puppies. You cannot no, I said No, I said with all that sponsorship money, the more dogs he can save. Oh, he will. He will. He I wouldn't be surprised. anything bad about it. Oh, oh, I know. I know. I'm just, I'm just, I have a lot of energy right now, and it's oh. like 10 o'clock at night. But the, um. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! How, like, please tell me. Oh no, you wouldn't have seen it. You wouldn't have seen it because you're at the game. Which one? With TSN and the whole chicken thing at halftime. They said it's not the chicken dance if he doesn't perform and sing the song at the same time. It's funny they say that because that was the song they played after he got a touchdown. That was the touchdown no, song. No, no, but he goes like this. They're saying he goes like this. They're saying he has to do the whole motions, the dance and no, everything. He not just, no, not he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Brady Oliveira does what the hell he wants when the hell he wants. That's how first, it works. First off, I would like to know where the heck did he come up with the chicken dance? I don't know. I think he just did it on the spot, and now he's like, shit, I guess it's catching on. I love all the Popeyes ads in the stadium. That's great, though. Great, great usage. Too bad you guys don't have Popeyes in yes, the stadium. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, what yeah. the hell are you talking about? We absolutely well, have I've Popeyes. Well, I've never been to IG Field. I have, I, have, I, have a, I have Popeyes like five minutes away from my house. <laughs> no, I'm not saying Popeyes stores in Winnipeg. Yeah. I said Popeyes stores in the stadium. Oh yeah, well the only pl the only places that really the only obviously place, you guys have Popeye the only stores sports, in the Winnipeg. only real like sports venue place in Winnipeg that actually rents out to other restaurants and shit like that would be uh, 
Formerly Shaw Park, now Blue Cross Park, where the Winnipeg Gold Eyes play. That's about it. Um, as the rest of it is, uh, or I guess the Jets have a Tim Hortons there. About, like, so, <laughs> question for you, Carter. What's the question? Which defense is going to show up this week? Is it going to be the Mr. Young defense? Or is it going to be the Chris Jones effects as much as, as much as I love some good Jordan Younger defense when it is uh, on all steams, uh, on all when it is moving on all cylinders, I'm I'm gonna guess that that's more the Chris Jones defense. However, I don't. The question is how much because that Buck Pierce offense last week for Winnipeg was lethal. Zach Kaleros I mean, was running. He he was running circles around these guys. That ball. I mean, was moving let's down the field be honest. At a ridiculous pace. Let's be honest. It's bloody Edmonton for Pete's sake. They have a young defensive core that should be good at some point, but they... they... At some point. My question is, what's the fans going to be like in Hamilton? Because this is not at IG Field. Because last time you guys won by three. Yeah. What's the fan reaction going to be like in Hamilton? Oh, oh, Ben. Bombers will be just fine. our second last home. I game think the Bombers the will do just a, c- c- will do completely fine at handling the crowd. And I think this goes for both Winnipeg and Saskatchewan in the sense of that Winnipeg has to deal with the most hostile of hostile Labor Day environments in Saskatchewan. And Hamilton and the Riders have to deal with the most hostile of hostile environments in the Banjo Bowl. And so it's one of those things where it's like, if the Bombers can handle Labor Day and handle the crowd there, they'll have no problem with Tim with, with the Ticats crowd. Not that the Ticats have a quiet crowd. It's they're, they're, there's, two, there's a few things. Number one, if you look at the architecture of Mosaic Stadium, the... the, the the roof structure funnels sound towards the field. And so naturally, it's going to be even louder on the field just with the way that the sound waves will bounce off and bounce back. With Tim Hortons Field, there's no roof. It's not going to bounce. It's going to dissipate out. Number two, as much as tie cap fans uh, are extremely loud, uh, they'll be more, they would be more loud against a team like the Argonauts than they would be against a team like the Bombers. Uh, not saying they won't be loud. They absolutely will be loud. What I'm saying is that... I would be shocked if this is their loudest game of the year. As I'm sure Labor Day against Toronto <sighs> would be a louder game. Were you checking there, Rick? <laughs> no, I was just looking at Ticat News, and I'm trying to see if the news has already spread. No, it has not. Yeah. So I will have to post that. Also... Um, I don't know if he still has some, but Simone Lawrence did release a hat line. I did not get one yet. I don't oh. know if I'm going to get one. They are a bit pricey. But yeah, I'm curious to see if we will be able to stop Oliveira this week. That's a great question. That's got to be one uh, focus for the Bombers just stopping the run game as uh, Rankin has been a problem for them the past two weeks. So uh, with Bell, it'll be important to uh, keep him contained and uh, uh, keep that down. And it's going to be important to have some good pressure on Bo Levi Mitchell. So uh, I expect Willie Jefferson to get those hands up quite a bit, try to swat a few balls down, maybe try to get in there for a sack. I want to see Jake Thomas going down the middle. I want to see Garbett going down uh, he was able to pick up a touchdown this past week um, in uh, in a bit of a confusing play, uh, but I think that they would be capable of getting it done in terms of getting back to believe by Mitchell. Just need to keep uh, that pass rush going well. Is there anything else what we need, Rick, for this one? That is it. And keep in mind, mm-hmm. I'm saying this for the record. Carter's going with Winnipeg. I'm going with Hamilton. Yes, it is what it I, is. I, I'm going with my Bombers. He's going with his Die Cats. Um, and that is exactly how all you wonderful people at home probably expected it. And so our next game is the Lions versus the Stampeders. However, before we get into that, if you guys can make sure you guys can like, share it around, and subscribe. If you haven't already, hit the little notification bell. It helps out the channel a ton. Lions Stamps. The Lions, in a very strange situation 
where they went on a, a bit of a slippery slope. They finally get a, a win or two and kind of push back a little bit just to win in a very close game of Hamilton last week where they give up 18 points in the fourth quarter and then lose in overtime. A lot of people wondering if this is pass interference. If it wasn't pass interference, I'm going to look right into the camera and say it absolutely was pass interference. So probably should be careful about that. Um, and then with the Stampeders, they've been kind of falling off recently, but occasionally they've been able to to put in the effort and gap, grab a win. However, usually that was at home. They do not have that advantage against BC. They're in BC place. However, BC, of course, they got to play some good defense. As 18 points in the fourth quarter, it's going to be hard to uh, – you're going to need quite a lead built up going into that if you're going to – Keep that moving. And Nathan Rourke, uh, as much as he's been okay, he's the problem is that he's only been okay. When you're looking at a guy like Nathan Rourke, you're expecting more than the 267 that he threw last week with no touchdowns. Um, so expecting more out of him there. Uh, the Calgary Stampeders still with their identity crisis that they're dealing with, with Jake Mayer being their number one, but not really being the number one they necessarily want. Um, and so I think realistically, Calgary Stampeders uh, in the offseason might look for a new quarterback to replace at the number one uh, at at QB1. But they're still with Jake Mayer for the rest of the season, and they're, they're now down to fifth in the West behind the Edmonton Elks. If the Stamps want to keep their playoff dreams alive, they're going to need a win here against the Lions to try to claw their way back up and see if they can maybe find their way into third in the West. Rick, what do you got to say about this game? Um, let me pull up this. Me, I as much as I know it's not going to happen, Calgary should move on from Jake Mayer. Give Matt Schultz a start because let's face that. Calgary's and he's healthy now, right? He is healthy now. Especially since and it's like you you've might had, even you've had, have you've a chance your... to beat BC. And they've had a bye week. So it's like they've had some time to kind of rest up and make sure everyone's as many people are healthy as possible. Uh, I expect Mills to do a lot of uh, a lot of running this week to try uh, to try to uh, punch it through that uh, defensive line. Uh, however, they're going to need to keep an eye on Matthew Betts uh, to hope that he doesn't get back into his prime form. But overall. Um, I don't know if there's a ton to say about this game. Is there anything else that you really got? There's really not much that I have. No, I mean, if Jake Mayer's still playing this BC, game, it's... BC needs to BC. win this game. I think if you're Calgary, you've probably accept the, re uh, the, fact, oh, of, the fact of the matter so that you're probably not making the playoffs. If, I, will, I will just but put it this BC, way. if you're BC, that's a tough pill to if, follow. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a big take here. Yep. My big take is... BC does not win this game. They're not making the playoffs. I don't. I, I think. I think you're right. I, because uh, if BC, this can't is the be easiest game in their schedule that they have left. Because BC plays Calgary, Saskatchewan, Montreal. It, it gets worse. The only they way they get they the only way they get lucky is if when they're playing Montreal, Montreal's pulled a lot of starters from their lineup. However, if we even look at the Alouettes, who do they got as their backup quarterback again? Davis Alexander. Yeah, and he had done very, very well. He had done better than Jake Mayer has even done as a backup in Montreal. And so, uh, again, I, I think that that doesn't change the fact that this is the easiest game left on the schedule here for the BC Lions. And so, if you're the Lions, you're going into that game and on October 4th. So, you need a win. Not only that, but... So, Edmonton... Wait, uh, let me go switch back over to, to schedule for a se uh, schedule for a second, because this this week is very interesting. And if you're asking me why, it's because, and I don't want to jump guns going to the next game, but BC loses this game. Yeah. If Saskatchewan beats Edmonton. Edmonton is mathematically eliminated from Z playoffs. And that is if, if they, what? If Edmonton loses to Saskatchewan this week, 
They are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. Hmm. Because BC... <coughs> BC, I'm pretty sure, has the season series against Edmonton. Edmonton would have to win three games. They would have to win out all their games. BC would have to lose out all of their games for Edmonton to make the playoffs. If Edmonton loses this week... BC loses out all their games. All Hamilton has to do is beat Calgary and beat Ottawa, and we're doing the crossover. It's crazy. Time. So if we lose this week against you guys, we are technically not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs until BC wins two games. Yeah. Or even one game. Well, no, because I'd have to go back and... Oh, no, because I they would have the season series over us. So, we they have to lose two games. And we have to win out three of our games. If BC loses all three games, we just have to win two. Interesting. So, there's different ways that this could go. If... But- all in all. All in all. BC versus Calgary. Who are you taking? I got to be real with my picks and not pick stupidly. I, I think the BC Lions win this game. My head says BC. My heart says I want Calgary to win to help us. Oh, but we oh, know, I, I want Calgary to win too to help Winnipeg. But we know how much, uh, depending on BC... other people, sucks. So... Unless they take Jake Mayer out and beating and beating, putting Matt Schultz in, which why I, that Matt Schultz hasn't played yet this summer is beyond me. Unless he's not one hundred percent yet, like at least give him a shot, even if it doesn't work, give it a chance. You're able. I mean, you that. have four games left. You're out of a playoff spot, and you're you, out of the and playoffs. You gave what's his name a shot? Uh, the uh, Bonner, or Logan Bonner. So. And let me tell you, Bonner is not worse than uh, Logan Bonner. Schultz is better than Bonner, I'll tell you that. Schultz did better than us than friggin' Bonner and Jake Mayer did of friggin' Edmonton last year. Yeah. So, we're both taking BC then, right? Yes. Which leaves us with our last game of the week, which is the Saskatchewan Rough Riders taking on the Edmonton Elks in Edmonton uh, in the Commonwealth Stadium. And, uh, Rick, how are you feeling about this one? You know what? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. What's your plans for Saturday night? What's my uh, plan for Saturday night? Yes. Uh, I uh, I do think I have a commitment uh, already. Okay. For Saturday. You're, you're thinking hmm. of the, the possible stream? I'm thinking of a possible stream because this is an important game to you bomber fans. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd be available for this one. I think I have some other commitments. Uh, if I am available, then maybe. Uh, but the uh, this will be an interesting one as Edmonton drops two straight to Winnipeg. Uh, I think they were probably mm-hmm. really hoping to get that one at home, uh, but they were not able to get it. And Saskatchewan trying to now they they've broken that that losing streak and they've tried to kind of recover and hopefully grab that second spot in the West. That is currently where they're uh, sitting. Currently, uh, the Bombers leave the lead the West with a nine and six record. The Riders behind them at seven seven and one. So eighteen points Winnipeg, fifteen for Saskatchewan. BC then in third, uh, seven and eight with fourteen points. Edmonton in fourth. 10 and 5 with 10 points and then behind them the Calgary Stampeders 4 9 and 1 with 9 points but important to mention the Tie Cats over in the east uh who are in fourth sitting at 6 and 9 with 12 points with uh, and they're looking for that possibility to maybe make it into the into the playoffs if you are um if you're Hamilton here uh you're hoping for Calgary to win for BC to drop and you're probably hoping for Saskatchewan to win, as uh, realistically, it's easier to catch, um, like, because so, if the uh, if the Elks win, then you then you guys would go to a similar record. I I don't know, like I, like who do you want? 
So because so it really is, depends on if BC wins or loses. If so, no, even if we're tied with a team in the West, we still cannot cross over. We have to have more points than third place in the mm. West. But Edmonton wins, or sorry, Edmonton loses. That puts Saskatchewan one point, one point behind you guys if you guys lose. If. if. You're like, that ain't going to happen. I was like, listen, I've seen you guys start the season 0 and 5. I've seen you guys come back with a 9 and 4 record in the last. 14 no, games sorry, sorry. or whatever nine, it is. Nine and two in the last 11 games. Nine and two in the last games. Listen, if any team can shit the bed, we've seen Ottawa shit the bed. We've seen Saskatchewan shit the bed. Every team has shit the bed one one te- one time or, or, or another this year. Mm-hmm. Toronto, Toronto is just, I don't think, I think Toronto's gone maybe like a three game losing streak. Um. Yeah, I think everyone's had a losing streak of their own. The only thing that makes me nervous about this game, yep, or I should say the previous game, yep, Calgary's zero and six against BC or against the West <laughs> Division. They haven't won on the road yet. They don't win on the road. Calgary wins at home, and that's not even a guarantee. Uh... Oh shit! Hold on. So, question. Because I already know that we're both picking Saskatchewan. Because I know you're not going to take the Elks. Should we should we place a little wager on if the ball's going to hit the scoreboard this week? <laughs> you talking over in that BC game? Talking about over in that BC game. I can just picture it now. <sighs> CFL, please put Ben Major as ref in that game, for, please. Ben Major has to ref all games in BC place moving yes. forward. It's a legal moving requirement forward. now. I'm making it. Yes. Legal requirements. Exactly. <laughs> TSN, uh, TSN's got to start paying royalties to Ben Major every time they forward that clip somewhere. He deserves it. Oh, and so this was the very first week that I've not seen Glenn Suter do a Saskatchewan Rough Rider game. Ooh. Well. Wow. Honestly, that might be for the better. <laughs> no. Sh- Although, I think if you had it Rick's way, you wouldn't have him do anything. Oh, there, you, you know how many people that if they see Glenn Suter doing the play-by-play, they're muting their TV and they'll go listen to some radio station? I was at, I was at my grandparent. I was at my, grandpa, uh, my grandparents' place, and I was talking with them, and we had a CFL game playing in the background. And so I'm talking to, like, my grandma for a second. And my grandpa looks at the TV and he's like, oh, why you shut up, Suter? <laughs> and I literally, the second I heard that, I just pictured Rick. Just uh, I was pictured you just freaking ripping on him. I was like, yeah, yeah, this is a widespread thing. This ain't just a, a Rick thing. I find grandpa, a, a good friend he's of mine. He's Kevin Glenn Sawyer Suter. of the CFL. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard Kevin Sawyer. I've never seen Kevin, Kevin Sawyer. Kevin Sawyer is the guy who does color commentary for the Jets. I know, I know that much. team that I don't like him. Yes, Kevin that. Sawyer, tell me why it, by the why the Jets losing 5 nothing actually isn't that bad. Tell me why it isn't. Tell me how we've played such a good game when we've let in like five goals on seven shots. Please, enlighten me. Oh, speaking of off-topic off news. Yeah. Did you hear about the Utah game the other day? Uh, What specific... What specifically? They had 11,000 fans. Oh, yeah. And apparently this is supposed to work in Utah. Well, well, this is temporary. I give it two years. At the Delta Center. Uh, no, no, they'll have more time than that because they're, they're going to be building a new arena like in uh, with the with the Utah Jazz. And this is actually getting worked on. This isn't like the Arizona thing where they were just talking about it. This is actually moving towards that. However, I will say 11,000, big improvement over the mullet. Agreed. However... With obstructed views. Yes. Yikes. That, that would Yikes. make sense. They got to fix. I don't know why they chose the Delta Center because I'm pretty sure there are other arenas Ooh. in there with similar capacities that are more suited for hockey. But, man, they got to they gotta, they gotta figure that shit out. Question. When does season begin? 
Uh, Jets season? Like, no, uh, like season in general. Just NHL season? Let me see. When yeah. Does NHL season... Be... It's funny. People are like, this is supposed to be like a CFL video, but now it's just me and Rick talking. Oh, and for those wondering... Oh, never mind, because it has a line on the website and says start of regular season, so October 4th. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, but everyone, everyone's so, going to be watching the Bombers versus the Ticats that game. The interesting thing is, um, I'm just looking at They're going to be here. watching some Brady Oliveira. <laughs> your guys' schedule, I think, your guys' season starts on the road against Edmonton. You're talking Jets. Yes. Yeah. So, the game that we're going to uh, is going to be the Jets' second home game of the season. Yeah. That'll be fun. And you know what's going to suck about this trip that I just what? noticed? What? Every province that I'm going to be going to is going to be timed differently. Oh, so I go from time. Ontario to Winnipeg. There's an hour difference. And then I go from Winnipeg to Regina. Then there's an hour, an hour difference. difference. Yeah. So it's like day, every they don't time do daylight we book, savings there. So yeah. No, but I mean, like, even when we do our, our drive to. I, I know. Um, I'm saying it's because, we, it's because Winnipeg and Saskatchewan are in the same time zone, except the only difference is that Saskatchewan doesn't do daylight savings like Manitoba. In the sense of oh. twice a year in Manitoba, you got to wind. You either have to wind the clock back, back or you gain which an hour, we do. or yeah. you have to, or you move it forward, or you gain, where you lo- where you lose an hour. Yeah, yeah. In Saskatchewan, they don't do that at all, ever. Oh. And so that's why the time. So the time sometimes aligns, sometimes it doesn't. It's weird. Um, but anyways, Riders Elks. I'm 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 taking the Riders in this one. I think they're I think they're winning as much as I don't want them to. I think they will. And I'm assuming that's what you're taking as well, based on what yes. we were talking about before. Yes. Is there anything else we got, Rick? Yes. Okay. So, for those people who did not wit- which watch our review yesterday, yeah, when you're seeing this, you can see me and Carter as we will be doing live content on field. Well, not on field, but at the stadium at probably the tailgate my my yeah my October 12th the Saturday in Regina also if you are a Jets fan we are going to be sitting together at the Jets wild game on Sunday October 13th we'll be up in the 300s <laughs> if you see us i will be wearing my cf <coughs> my c my cfl hat come say hi i'll be wearing all jets stuff I, I, oh, I'll be wearing my Minnesota Wild jersey. Don't kid yourself. Yeah, yeah no. I'll and make sure. I'm, I finally I'll make sure to spill my beer on it. <laughs> I finally get to meet the famous Zach. Uh huh. This yeah. is going to be interesting because I already told your brother I owe him a beer. Oh, great! That's lovely. And, well, I, I'd say I owe yeah, you a beer I, too, I can't but wait you got to drive. Zach consume more alcohol than he should. That's awesome. Oh, listen. <laughs> if we're talking about this, you should see the people I'm bringing with me. That's a whole different story. I don't think you've ever seen Drunk Zach. Oh, I don't think you've seen, like, the people that I'm bringing. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that then. Anyways, we're getting real off topic here. Uh, thank cold. you, all, all you wonderful people, <laughs> for watching this definitely not drunk session of Canadian Football Central, where we talked about the fun all times the, me and Carter have. Exactly, all the fun nonsensical oh, times. The one, the one. Oh quick my note God, to... you have more shit no, to talk about. Hold on, this, this is this is one quick note. Yeah. So, me. I went to go get my lovely new phone today, 16, iPhone 16, and we're sitting in Mississauga, and our friend Carter's or Car- Connor is with us, and there is more Ticat fans in Costco than there is Toronto fans, and Connor turns over and That's says- That's the real judge of a fan base. Who has more of their bitches in Costco? <laughs> no, 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 but it's not even that. These people are from Mississauga, so you can tell 
Ticat Nation is not just Hamilton. It leads all the way out to Toronto. This is what you needed Mississauga. to get in before the end of yes. our video. <laughs> it's just a little nice little timbit. Oh, there you go. The fun stuff that you find out out in person. And then people would ask us, how are we together? Because like walking in the store together. Because I'm wearing this and he's wearing his Argo jersey. They're like, Don't you feel bad for him? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Like, how are you fr friends? I'm like, you know how many people have asked us that? Fair enough. But anyways, anyways, that's all I have. That's all you got? You sure, Rick? Do you not have... Yes. To, no, you going to tell us about how Ticat fans and Superstore was, are going to get this moving? <laughs> I, was tr I was trying to make it 30 minutes. Fair and it's enough. now 30 minutes. Well, I hope Weed you all... Balls, people. Both yeah, rolls. Exactly. And <laughs> chicken outfit in Winnipeg. It's the chicken man himself. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. And uh, hit the little notification bell. Helps out the channel a ton. Peace, love, and positivity to all you wonderful people at home. Or as Rick would do, this. And we will see all you wonderful people next time. Touchdown.